We have heard of people who identify as non-binary using the pronoun they or their instead of he or she. Um, but what about this, having a they-be instead of a baby? It's a new term that some parents are using to show that they're bringing up their offspring gender neutral. It's a very interesting situation. Um, I ju just tell us a little bit about um, Sparrow. Are you able to even sure. say how Sparrow was, you know, what gender Sparrow was born? Or is that something you avoid talking about altogether? Well, you know, the whole point of gender is that we don't know Sparrow's gender yet, um, as far as what their anatomy is. Uh, we do choose to keep that private, you know, to a, a short list of uh, caregivers. Now, this was um, not the situation, was it, with um, Hazel, who was your first child, because Hazel, yes, you did bring correct. up in, um, you know, as a, as a little girl. Well, I did assign binary pronouns to Hazel initially, yes. Uh, and then when they were older, they articulated a preference for using they, them pronouns. So right, just, just so I get my head around all this, it's obviously very complicated. Um, not to you, but it's complicated to me. So let me try and let's just <laughs> lay this out. Explain your domestic setup. You're, you're married, is that right? Uh, yes, uh, I'm in a multi-adult family. There's three of us that are raising uh, two children, uh, an eight-year-old and my one-year-old. And, and how would you describe yourself? You are, you were born biologically uh, am, male, or how would you describe I'm non-binary. Yeah, I'm non-binary, which means that you know, I don't identify as a man or a woman, uh, and I use they, them pronouns. OK, and your, your wife or partner, is it a wife? How would you describe your other half? Uh, well, um, uh, all of the adults in my household identify as transgender or non-binary. Right. And you're only married to one or you're married to both? Uh, legally married to one. Right. In and a relationship with another. Uh, but, so the yeah. one you're legally married to, what is their name? Uh, Bren. Bren. And, is, and, and Bren identifies as? Uh, a woman. <laughs> a Uses woman. she, her. And, and she was born a woman and remains identifying as a woman? Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's she's a woman. <laughs> okay, and who's the third the third member of the? Uh, setup? My my partner Luna, who yeah. uses they them pronouns as well. And Luna is male or female, or non-binary. Non-binary, and okay, but you're not married to Luna. No. Okay, and you have two children in in the house. Yes. Okay, and just to clarify again, Sparrow. We don't know whether Sparrow was born male or female because you haven't said that. But Sparrow is now non-binary? No. Uh, Sparrow is, I, I would say, antigender, which is a term, you know, that means before gender. Like, all children, you know, at this age are developmentally not able to really understand gender yet. It's just something that they're not they don't have the understanding for. So it's not that the child is non-binary, it's that the child just doesn't have any gender yet. Right, but the child, I mean, look, let me try and get my head around like this. They do, obviously, they do have anatomy. Right, yeah. so, so, so what anatomy does Sparrow have? Well, I mean, that's something that we don't usually discuss unless it's necessary with maybe a medical professional or, you know, a caregiver. Right, right, so... Ari, okay. I just wonder if I can intervene here, because I think that a lot of people uh, find this very confusing. And it's because mm -hmm. people think that if you are born with biological anatomy that indicates that you're either male or female, then therefore you have that gender identity. You're a man or a woman. But can you explain why you think that that isn't helpful, that the, the anatomy that you are born with biologically shouldn't dictate your identity? Because I think that's the sort of bigger point that your situation is trying to get to, isn't it? That that when you're born with certain genitals, society decides how you should act. And, and as far as I'm trying to understand it, that is what you're railing against. Am I right? Yes, that's a, a great question and a great clarification. Uh, what it is is that, you know, yes, commonly people born with one type of anatomy will identify with one gender. People with different anatomy will identify with another. Uh, but that totally negates the fact that there are legitimately thousands of people all over the world for whom that is not the case. So what, I would, is, so what um, I would say, I mean, just in, uh, you know, from that point of view, you're not necessarily dictated to by society. I mean, if, if uh, you have a little girl 
and, you know, she's biologically a girl, she can decide and still be a, a she. This is... I mean, I'm putting this to you. I don't she think you, can... you can't call her a she, though. Sparrow's not a she, No, right? I know. So let's talk about yeah. a different little girl or a, another child. We don't know if Sparrow's yeah. she or he. No, that really? is true. Hmm. So let, I'm talking about a, a little girl who, whose parents do call her a she. She doesn't necessarily need to, for instance, play with dolls, you know... Uh, do cooking lessons no, exactly. and wear gender she expression. Just doesn't have to. Yeah, gender expression is totally different from gender identity. Someone can identify as a boy and you know like any color, any toy, sports, dance, pink, mm -hmm. blue, whatever. And same with identifying as a girl or non-binary. People's interests or hobbies or, or preferences don't dictate what their gender is. When did, and, when and did Hazel having a preference? Yeah, when did Hazel dictate. decide uh, that she was no longer going to be a girl? Uh, Hazel decided that they were non-binary when they were about four. They had been exploring uh, gender uh, before that, you know, mm. d it, trying on different pronouns, experimenting with different names. Uh, but they picked they them pronouns and chose the name Hazel when they you were see, four. See, Ari, with, with the greatest of respect, uh, I have a seven-year-old daughter. Right? When she was four mm. years old, her main decision of the day was whether to watch Peppa Pig or Frozen. She had not a clue. Mm -hmm what about gender identity or non-binary or any of this stuff. Um, and I put it to you that this wasn't, this wasn't Hazel's idea, was it? This was your idea. You decided that Hazel uh, had gender issues that she needed to address and you persuaded your daughter that she was no longer to be a girl, didn't she? I mean, I, I personally don't agree with that assertion, but I can see how that could be misconstrued. Uh, you know, I think that every family environment is unique. And say a child becomes a, a concert pianist very young, age six, they're playing Beethoven. Well, maybe is it because their father is a pianist and they had a piano in the home and they explored music earlier? Hazel has a unique education because uh, living in an LGBT family, they have met people of different gender expressions and have been safe to explore their own gender, which has led them to a personal discovery. Isn't Does that it, mean Ari, that I forced Ari, them? Ari, isn't no, this, of course isn't not. Isn't this just utterly exhausting, trying to keep up with all this? I mean, a lot of it... You know, I've got no problem with you leading any life you like. Honestly, I haven't. You're a fully grown adult. You want to call yourself they and non-binary, whatever it is. I have total respect for your rights, frankly, to do whatever you want to do. My issue is what's happening with the kids in your household and whether actually it's all being driven by the adults in the home and not these children. I mean, Little Sparrow, we don't even know if Little Sparrow is a, a girl or boy, and you say we now have to call Sparrow they... Um, and Hazel, what does Hazel call Sparrow? Uh, their baby sibling. Their baby, so she literally says, good morning, baby sibling. Well, it, usually by name, like, good morning, Sparrow, but when right. someone asks, you know, who is that, you say, my baby sibling, yeah. And does she, does Hazel call Sparrow they? Yes. They. So she says, they, can I have, you know, can I have a, can I play a game with you? They. Well, not when talking to them. You know, when talking to them, they would mm. say, you, like, would you like to share a cookie with me, Sparrow? And Sparrow would, of course, because they're a baby. But if I'm in the room and I want to have a cookie and I ask Hazel, can I have a cookie? And she says, yes, I'll just ask they, right, Sparrow. Is that, is that how yeah, it them. I'll ask, ask them. them. Ask yeah. them. Yeah, you would say, so Hazel might say, I'll ask <laughs> them if they want to here's share. What here's what I don't get, though, because they and them are plural words. And I, I've always struggled with this. I don't understand why, mm -hmm. in this non-binary world, you would take a plural word, like them or they, well, to describe a singular genders, entity. Doesn't it doesn't make any... I'm, I'm a grammatical purist. <laughs> I don't really understand from a well, grammatical well, point of totally view... that's totally reasonable. Why, ..why you would call people by plural titles. Well, well, they actually has a history of being used as a singular pronoun as well as a plural pronoun. Back, you know, hundreds of years ago, 14th century, 1700s, you know, people used they singularly as well. But yeah, in common usage, they does have a, a plural connotation. We are just working within the limited framework of the pronouns available to us in English. Yeah. There are Ari, people who use uh, invented pronouns, but those sometimes can be difficult for people to navigate. Ari, I, I wonder whether when... You know, cos it it's complicated for an adult like me to, to uh, mm -hmm. get 
my head round um, and I'm doing my absolute you know best to be sensitive and understanding about it because it's uh, you know I think a lot of people find it um, find it difficult to understand when it comes to children um, because you know if you've got a, a if you've got a child of four um, who's growing up it must be difficult for them to try and express that to other adults who don't understand your setup and don't understand the situation. And when other adults say, have you got a little brother or a little sister, you know, how does a, a small child explain that, you know, perhaps to other children that they're at nursery with? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, Hazel is very confident, very verbose uh, and, and very well-spoken and they enjoy advocating for the visibility of their family and they enjoy engaging their peers and adults in conversation. Um, obviously I've never forced them into a spotlight and I've never I've told them you know that they, they can always choose to disengage when they don't want to over explain themselves but to them it's pretty simple to say oh we don't know Sparrow's gender yet they're gonna tell us when they're older right now we use they them pronouns. What happens, if, what happens if Sparrow decides how old is Sparrow she's four now right or he uh, they is uh, they is four. Sparrow is one year old. Sparrow, so I'm sorry, Hazel is four and Sparrow is one. Hazel right? is eight. Okay. Hazel Let's... changed Hazel their gender. Hazel has been non binary for Hazel four years. Hazel changed her gender at four but is now eight and Sparrow is one. Yeah. yeah? What happens yes. if Hazel decides tomorrow she would now like to be a girl or a boy? I don't. Well, then I would support that. Hazel, you know, is totally allowed to continue to explore their gender and have it evolve. You know, a gender isn't always a static thing for some people. And what is Sparrow... Being what is Sparrow and using they, them is what they want right now. OK, and is Sparrow, when she gets to, say, three or even two, when they can first start to talk, if, she, if her first words mm -hmm. are, I want to be non-binary or I want to be a boy or I want to be a girl, would you just respect anything that a two-year-old child would say? You, you accepted a four-year-old's... Uh, uh, insistence on changing gender. Would you accept a two-year-old? I would accept that that child was exploring. Um, you know, I think that at that age, gender Ari, a child of two is, is, is in no... I'm stone. sorry about... I'm sorry to be the stick in the mud here. A two-year-old kid hasn't got a Scooby-Doo about any of this stuff. The idea that well, you exactly. would literally... The oh, idea that you would even... Thing. If my the kid idea said that, that they wanted to parent, pretend to be Scooby-Doo, I would let, play along, let, you let know, just, follow let, the child. The idea that you as a parent would even countenance the idea that a two-year-old child has any ability to form any serious perception of gender, I think, frankly, I put it to you respectfully, is utterly ridiculous and actually damaging to that well, child. Well, then, in that case, if a two-year-old child, as you say, genuinely has no ability to conceptualize gender, isn't it toxic and bizarre that at two we are telling someone you are a boy because of your anatomy? If that two-year-old genuinely can't conceptualize of what a boy is, isn't it make more sense that if a two-year-old genuinely has no ability to process what a gender is, as you said, that I don't, you know, tell them what their gender is and I don't emphasize gender constantly. I let them be what they are, which is a toddler. Say you offer structure, what could be more of a structure than actually saying to your child, this is your name and that's your name? And if when you get to be an adult, you want to change your name, then you become a, your own adult, your own responsibility, you take your own decisions. Part of being a parent mm. is until a child reaches adult age, actually, the parent takes these decisions. What, what are you That's doing as a parent? I guess as a my, parent, you're my saying, just get on with it. Is that I feel that what you're expressing is a, a bit of childism, which is assuming that someone has to be a legal adult to have the capacity to know themselves. Childism is a new one. And I one. think All a right. child I've heard just can about... explore identity. All right, Ari, I've heard just about every ism imaginable. I've never heard... Every ism, to I've be been honest. accused of every ism, and I, I'm struggling with this new world of isms, right? Uh, what is childism? You're against children. Making their own decisions. Uh, I believe that, well, childism is uh, the normalization of the mistreatment of children just because they're young. You know, like uh, assuming that they can't uh, have opinions or ideas, you know, that they can't, you know, obviously they do need guidance and structure, but mistreating them or treating them like property or denying their identity and autonomy. So giving a child a gender because of its anatomy, assuming that they're boy or girl, or giving them a name, all that would be childism from your point of view. 
uh, not giving them, but forcing them to use them regardless of what the child wanted. So if a three-year-old yes. child decides, I'm no longer a boy or girl, I'm no longer going to be called Bob, I want to be called Doris, whatever it may be, if a three-year-old child decides to do that and I object and say, no, your name is Bob, not Doris, and you're a boy, not a girl, at three, then I'm guilty of childism. Potentially, yes.